Um, yes, so, well, the title, uh, I had to, to come up with something, um, but really, the, this, is, this is not about reviewing in the sense of trying to see which one is better than the other, it's, it's really just about seeing what exists at the moment, and maybe what we can do with those, and what are they good for. Um, so, um, first, I think it's important to to have in mind that this is from a user per perspective, not a developer or not not somebody that is working on designing those tools, um, because well, that's where I stand, and also uh, I see sometimes when developers are talking at at conferences, uh, events, and such, uh, I, I see them talk or on forums about the the mythical user. Uh, how how he would use the software and in, in what way he would maybe uh, misuse it or whatever. Um, but um, my experience is the people that I mostly work with, they look up to me as somebody that is tech savvy, that is like a poor user or something. But when I'm in those events with, with developers and you guys, I, I feel very dumb sometimes. Um, so I think it's a... Uh, Yes, it's good to establish that probably the user that will come to use or meet those software, those solutions that we have, well, he, he might be talented or maybe he's meant to become talented in the sense that maybe there are stuff that he's not capable of doing yet, but might be capable of doing because his, his musical skill will grow with him um, and the tool that he will be using at the beginning will be the tool that he will be comfortable when he gets to that stage as a musician. So the question of can the, can the software be used uh, from a very basic skill level music-wise to a very advanced skill level is important, I think. Um, so that person might not be very tech-savvy. For instance, uh, a very good friend of mine, uh, a very good producer, uh, he's... He, he had a, still have a very tremendous, cool career uh, in Belgium. Well, big in Belgium, right? Uh, <laughs> and um, yes, so I, I see, I've seen him once. Uh, we were working on a piano piece uh, on MIDI, and uh, I, I, I thought maybe the, the 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 part we were working on could use some sustained pedal, um, but it was designed by hand, so handwritten in MIDI. Um, and he didn't know where he could add that stuff. So he just added a reverb and, well, it, it doesn't work the same, it doesn't sound the same, but it was very unique in the way he used it and it worked for him. Um, so there are cases where, of course, uh, there are options and we can go and fetch them, but most of the time people that are not, uh, that are not comfortable with anything related to uh, technology, they will just take the shorted path, um, and yes, so probably not tech savvy, or maybe not tech savvy. Um, he's subjected to advertisements. Um, well, basically, he goes on forums, he goes he buy magazines or stuff, and he see shiny, fancy stuff, and he likes those because, well, those advertisements they say that the tool is well suited for him. Uh, despite of it being true or not, um, he just he feels confident that if he's using that, it, w it, it will allow him or enables him to, to go where he wants to be. And that's very important to feel confident that you have the proper tool. Um, and also, well, that's probably related in the same way, but um, he knows other musicians in real life, and maybe they're not using the same software as he, as he does or the same solutions. Um, and that's, to me, it's an important aspect, the fact that that trust that you have in a brand or in a solution, whatever, um, it comes from, well, the people that are, uh, that are creating it or making it available, but also from, from the community that is using it. Um, so yes, and that's also where all the helps or most of the helps you will find will come from. So. All right, so those are the criteria that I tried to have in mind when trying the different solutions we have for drums. Um, so ease of use, like I said, um, that that person, he didn't, about the piano part, he didn't want it to look around in forums and stuff for how to add sustain. So 
he, he needs to be able to, to go very quickly from there is nothing to there is something that is more or less working. Um, the sound quality, of course, it doesn't need to be outstanding at first, but can it grow with the project? Like, you start sketching something, you have a, a basic drum beat. Um, could you repurpose that work you have done and make it grow with the project as, as uh, you know, uh, with, um, ah, sorry. Uh, so when the when the project will start to to expand and grow and we we'll want to do mix and stuff, uh, can you bring that with you? Um, so some quality, trustiness. Well, like I said, does it makes you feel confident that you can use that to go from the, the very early stages of your song to the very last um, stages? Um, yes, this is redundant. All right. And yes, efficiency, because, well, nerds, we like it when it's efficient. OK, so the first solution, of course, is using real drummers. Um, those one I've used, uh, they're good. <laughs> yes. Um, so system requirements, well, obviously, uh, if he's a good drummer, that's better. Um, also, a good drum set. Lots of people, I think, don't understand the, the importance of tuning drum sets and just having overall good material when you're going into studio or into session. Um, but uh, you also need um, lots of microphones and preamps. Um, and probably that's the most difficult thing, but uh, a really good acoustics if you want to record something properly. Um, so pros, well, uh, it sounds good sometimes. Um, also, the drummer will do something very important. It will help you design the the beat that you will try to create. So the the feedback that he will give over what you're trying to write, uh, I think, is very important. Also, the more you work with a drummer, the more he understands what sort of music you're wanting to make, and that's also very important. Uh, so in a way, he's growing with your with your project. Um, cool feature. Well, yes. Um, cons. Well, it sounds terrible sometimes. Uh, well, you need a good drummer and a good drum set. Um, so also maybe at some point you're using a, a very good drummer, but you feel that your music is shifting towards something else, and maybe that drummer will not fit your project anymore. Um, so maybe he's not very versatile, um, and yes, also uh, super loud and beer stuff. So now, um, oh no, no, wait! Um, I wanted to have you listen to. Oh shit! I need to close these sessions. Uh, crap. Uh, hopefully, this will be quick. But those sessions are very loud, uh, very large. Um, so this was a session I recorded last year. Um, I have the, I didn't have the original session, but I still had the 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 stem export for the the demo we made. So the demo was recorded uh, in like a rehearsing room uh, with normal microphones, something that you could acquire for not too much money. Um, and it sounded like this. I will play a little bit of it, uh, and then I will solo the the drum. <laughs> Um, this was like you can so as you can see this was uh, I think five five microphone setup so fairly easy setup um, and this is uh, when we started mixing and then the mastered version but here uh, I don't have the isolated track for the drum unfortunately. So this is the oh sorry. <laughs> Sorry, my fault. Um, so this is the first version of the mix. This was the last version of the mix, I guess. And this is the mastering. Uh, 
Um, so for that result, um, it took some time in a, for the mastering version. It took some time in a professional studio, so that cost money. Um, it was a professional drummer, so that cost money as well. And um, the overall the overall finished product, I'm, I'm pretty proud of, but uh, it was a lot of effort, and yes, it took lots of resources. So now for the actual subject of this talk, um, plugins and and, bang, and sound banks and stuff, they try to bring the costs and the, to to make it easier to achieve those results. And when I started doing music on my computer, this was the one thing I was dreaming of. Um, and I finally bought a license after some time. Um, it's very good, um, but there is one big problem. It doesn't run well with Linux. Um, so let's review the pros. Um, well, the sound quality is outstanding. It's very versatile because there are lots of kits and users are sharing lots of presets. Um, so that's very important. Um, actually, it's part of that of that plugin, uh, the fact that you can mix the drum the drum kits inside of the plugin, um, it can turn basically any plugin, uh, sorry, any drum kits into something else. So that's very interesting. Uh, it helps you design uh, your grooves because it has a built-in MIDI uh, MIDI loops player, if you will. Um, it's also very flexible with the MIDI mapping, and that's important because. Um, maybe you're working with a drummer that has an electronic drum kit and he's helping you out, um, but the mapping will be all over the place. So the fact that you're capable of remapping on the fly is very, very convenient. Also, it has stereo and multi-outs, um, which means that you can ver start very quickly. You don't need uh, a, a very complicated setup in your DAW to start using it, just a stereo tracks and basically use presets. And then once you're comfortable with the, the way your song sounds, you can start to tweak a little more into detail in, in detail how it sounds. The, the biggest cons is, of course, well, the day you will most need it, it will not work. And actually, I've been there. That, that was a, a very terrible day. Um, very uncomfortable, actually. It, it was a paid session. And yes, nothing would work. So that, that's not good. Um, also, it doesn't scale, apparently. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so this is, this is the interface. Um, there are stuff that are, so lots of small tweaks and stuff that makes it very convenient. Like, for instance, if you want to check uh, the different velocity layers just by uh, how high is the pointer on the on the image will give you different samples. Um, you can you can change your kits on on the fly. Like maybe I don't like this snare. That's alright. I can use this one. Oh, no, it's terrible. Yeah, why not this one? Um, like I said, presets uh, by default there are lots of them. Um, and also, the this MIDI thing I was talking about um, not here, uh, this MIDI thing I was talking about, um, and again, it comes preloaded with lots of them. So maybe this one. So again, like I said, it's pretty easy to use and pretty fast to move stuff around. Um, only problem is, again, it will most probably not work. Uh, but today we were lucky. Um, so I don't consider this to be a proper solution if you're in an open source environment because, well, when you're working on something artistic, it's very important to be able to stay focused on what you're well, on, on your targets, you're, you, you have some sound in your head and you want to take them out. Um, so crashes and stuff, that's, that's a nightmare. Um, yes, all right. So uh, I guess the easiest way if you want to add tracks, uh, drum tracks to your drums to your tracks uh, is audio loops. Um, well, audio loops, they're cool because, well, sound quality uh, can be very good. Uh, they can do most genres of music, um, no MIDI mapping problem, and there are some that 
purpose multi outs uh, like uh, the loop fluff, for instance. I don't know if you know them. They're great. You can even have uh, Nate Smith playing on your on your songs. So that's cool. Um, but cons, well, again, sound quality. Some of them are very bad. Um, and also, if you're if you're changing some part if in your in your song, um, well, it it won't really uh, adapt. So um, it doesn't scale up. Also, if you don't have the multi outs, so you you cannot you cannot tweak them as much as you as you'd want. Um, and also, there is a big problem with audio loops, and it's that. Um, we don't really, or at least until recently, we didn't really had a, a good uh, software to manage those loops. So there used to be this one called SampleCat. Uh, I tried to install it, to install it, uh, but it uh, yes, that was not very. Uh, so it's not practical um, and doesn't work in the end. So. Um, the the one in Ardor that just allows you to import. Um, I mean, it's good. It allows you to to li to listen to it uh, before you import. But basically, that's all you can do. Um, so yes, I don't consider this a proper option because well, usually people that use loops will have a lot of them. So it's important to be able to to yes manipulate them in a convenient way. Enters this one. Uh, it's a uh, it's a new stuff. It's called Sononime, um, and uh, it has it has some very cool features. Like for instance, I will show you um, right away. So it's Jack compatible, and uh, yeah. <laughs> it's Jack compatible, and um, it has an audio a serial audio input. Uh, and the reason for that is because um, it can listen to the music you're doing. So this is a session uh, I will use for the presentation. It's well, the first loop sounds like this. So um, if I want to find something that will fit with that. Um, I, I need a rhythmic part that will understand where those accents are. Um, so I connected the output of Ardor to the input of Sononym, and now if I play my loop. Now it has this this. Uh, loop that is I've heard here. That's basically what I just played. And now, what's very smart about the way they they built this tool is that um, it can analyze all of your loops, all all your library, and suggest um, stuff that are uh, similar. Uh, in regards to different uh, parameters such as spectrum or the tone or the pitch or whatever, uh, which is very convenient because well the spectrum will give you all the accents. Um, so say I want I don't know a drum that will fit this. I suggest maybe this one. So, oh, shit. Um, a, another uh, thing that might seem very mundane, but actually is very important about Sononym. Um, this might sound silly for some of you, but actually, oh, uh, yes, shit. <laughs> uh, you can drag and drop stuff. Um, and that should be a given, but uh, actually, uh, it's apparently not so easy because. Well, one of the solutions that was uh, suggested on Reddit for this very problem about managing loops was to use Mix to do it. But the problem with Mix is that the, the file explorer wouldn't allow you to drag and drop. Um, so, all right, let's say we have found some that fit, or at least that we feel confident we can use them. Um, so I, I chose these ones here. 
Um, so let's have a listen. So it's not bad, but it's not great either. Um, so in the end, what you probably have to do is edit them in order to fit. So once you've cut it, uh, well, cut the, the the different hits and place them on your grids, it could sound like this, which is not super appropriate. But I mean, we could try to work something from that. Uh, this was another one. Which again, why not? Uh, uh, I also had this one. Um, so in the end, what I did is um, I I cut it. And unfortunately, I cannot uncombine it. Uh, I've tried, but it it wouldn't work. Um, I don't know why. Yes, maybe because I've uh, copy pasted. Well, anyways, so this is the um, this is the um, the the thing that I edited out of a loop. Um, it's something like this. So I just kept that uh, kept that. Uh, basically, every single hit has been cut out and placed where I wanted it because I, even with Sononyme, I couldn't find one that I really liked or could use properly. Um, so that leads us to so that's about loops and stuff. Um, basically, Sononyme could be a good option if you really want to use them, but. Uh, truthfully, it's it. I, I don't consider it to be extensible to the point where it could be. A, you could have a professional results, um, except if you're basing your composition out of the. Well, you're building it over the loop, um, but that's something different here. That's not the the scenario I'm presenting, but yes, why not? So when you when you go onto forums and stuff about Linux Audio and you ask about drums. Usually, the first thing that comes up is this um, hydrogen. It has a lots of very cool features. Uh, it's very easy to start with. The pattern editor is very good. Um, there are lots of kits, and also you're you're capable of modding them very easily. So I don't know if maybe some of you uh, didn't know about that, but say I I have I don't know whichever this one. Why not? So, um, so you can really go and try to try to shape it or make it sounds the way you want. Also, it's uh, multi-layer. Uh, I think it can go up to sixteen layers, um, and each sample can be can be edited. So, it's pretty deep. Also, uh, you have the mixer, um, so it's not super complex. Uh, it's basic stuff, pan, volume, and, and such, but uh, that's already something. Um, yes, you can very easily install new kits, which is, I think, um, convenient. It's, it's important if you don't find the sound you like to be able to seek new one and and Directly from the from the interface. Sorry, that's not the uh, import. So basically, all those are available right from the, um, the interface, which is good. Uh, sorry. Um, it has mixing capacity capacity, like I said, capabilities. Um, now for the cons, um, it's not very convenient because well, if you want to incorporate it with your song, you basically have to work with. Um, Sorry, with Jack Transport, um, and well, to my experience, it's not it's not always the best ID. So, say I have my loop here, um, so uh, yes, of course. So, is it connected? Yes. So, if I yes. Oh, didn't I? Yeah, you have the internal slot in the left. 
Uh, oh yes, no, yeah. yes, yes. Sorry. Um, okay, so say I have um, I have this cool beat that I want to try. Yes. Wow. Um, <laughs> amazing. So good. That's great. Now Yeah, well, it's not it's not ideal. Um <laughs> Also normally if I loop stuff here Yes, it doesn't work. So I'm trying to hit uh, the shortcut for loops, but it doesn't work. Um, so yes, that solution is not is well. I think it could be improved. Um, also, so oh yes, uh, why why wouldn't it work now? I guess the jack transport uh, has missed. Oh yes, that's why. Okay, so um, there is also something very annoying, uh, which is about the MIDI mapping. Oh well. <laughs> yes, that's very annoying as well. Um, so what was my super drum beat? Yes. Oh great. Cool. Um, that's that's convenient. I like that. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> mm. That's me too. Cool. Jack transport. Oh yes. Shit. Um, so now, technically, if I change the kit, uh, it will not, of course, reassign uh, death metal. Yes, of course. It will not reassign uh, all the MIDI mapping, so my beat is I basically have to rewrite it all over. Um, so yes, that's not good. Um, it's only stereo off, uh, so if you cannot go up to the end of the, the mixing stage uh, within uh, hydrogen itself, uh, Basically, you, you will be limited later on. Yes? I believe you can export multi track from hydrogen. Can you now? Yeah. Uh, okay. I think you can export uh, multi track audio from hydrogen and then you can uh, mix it like a real drum kit in, uh, in Ardor. Okay. But you need to sequence it in hydrogen for that. Yes. Um, so the sequencing part itself uh, is already complicated because, like I showed, well, it's not very convenient to work with different software. Jack Transport doesn't allow for loops and stuff, and that's that's a very common workflow nowadays. Um, it's very rare, or at least I know very few people that starts by writing their songs and then recording them. Um, so yes, probably you could export, or even if you're very brave, you could you could isolate tracks, export several times. Why not? People do crazy stuff like that sometimes. But um, it's yes, it, the basically where what I feel about hydrogen is um, it it feels that like it's maybe less relevant in a modern day uh, production environment. Um, typically, where I would use hydrogen is for education purposes. When I need to practice stuff on my instruments, or uh, when uh, so I teach music also, and sometimes I recommend my students that they practice with hydrogen because it's way more fun than a metronome, for instance. Um, but uh, yes, it's it's very good at starting stuff out, but not finishing them. That's my impression. Um, okay, so also you could you could work around the uh, uh, you know the jack transport stuff by using kits directly inside of of your DAW of choice. Um, so there is a, a very cool uh, plugin that's called DRMR for this, um, but you still be left with the um, with a problem for MIDI mapping and stuff. 
Um, and also now you need to write your own your own uh, drum beats, and you don't have the the help from Adrigen itself uh, because well. I don't mind piano roll, but I could see why people would not feel comfortable writing in, inside of us. Though there are advantages, um, the fact that you're able to see all the waveforms directly inside uh, well, of the same interface, that's convenient. Um, about the RMR, um, something, well, the problem is sometimes, yes, there you go. So the, the interface <laughs> doesn't scale very well, um, and now I cannot uh, close the plugin or change the... I can close the plugin, but can I change the, um, the kit? Alt and move the window. Yes. Oh, interesting. Well, like I said, I'm not very tech savvy. Uh, though, I think one thing that is, that is cool with the RMR uh, is uh, that you're capable of mixing, well, some, it's very limited, but there is some mixing capabilities inside of it. And now that it's unbroken, thank you, Falk. <laughs> um, so, yes, it's, I think now with this it becomes maybe more convenient to use hydrogen. Uh, you could s start by trying stuff out inside of hydrogen and then bring your kits to Ardor when you're uh, starting to get more serious about your songwriting. Um, but yes, still not ideal. And also something very important about hydrogen and DRMR is that there are lots of kits, but not all of them are very good. Um, so uh, you know what? I won't. Uh, I won't this for that. That wouldn't be nice. <laughs> um, but anyway, you can try them out. Um, some of them are are decent. Um, but yes. Okay. So. Now, uh, for an, an expected contendent, uh, this one. Um, I'm sorry, I will I will uh, take this first. Um, so, um, say we decided not to use hydrogen or external application, and we want to do it inside of uh, of a DAW. Um, we want the advantages of working with MIDI because, well, we can. Uh, change stuff later on, and it's very convenient. But we're not very confident that we're capable of writing our own drum beats and stuff. Um, well, MIDI loops are there to help, um, and well, that's where it gets very frustrating because um, I don't know if you know about Audacious, but so far that's the best um, MIDI loop manager that I've found. Um, <laughs> so basically, the trick is. Um, you can, uh, uh, where is it? Yes. Uh, it's, 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 um, you can point the MIDI output to uh, the MIDI true port. And from there, you can load uh, MIDI files inside of it. Um, so let's say I want to try these, these bits here. Um, now I could have a MIDI track inside of Ardor and ask it to look for, wait. Uh, oh, yes, of course. <laughs> uh, where was it? This one? Yes. So now, oh, that's new. Oh, yes. Okay, so now I can, I can play those MIDI files inside of Audacious and listen to them uh, with the drum kit I selected. Um, so now the um, MIDI mapping problem becomes a problem again. Um, so for now, let's use uh, the general MIDI plugin. Where is it? Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> oh, yes. Which one? Uh, let's just go with this one. Okay, so um, basically now with Audacious, you can listen to different groove. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> That's not what I've asked. 
Um, does it? Usually by default it's listening to record all channel. Mm, should not be that. Hmm, that's weird. Oh, yes. Oh, didn't have that uh, last time I, well, when I prepared, um, when I pretended I was preparing. Uh, okay, anyway, uh, so for uh, channel 10. Sorry, come again. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> well, <laughs> interesting. So, okay, let's just pretend that this would have worked. Um, anyway, this was to this was to to make it clear to you if it wasn't already that um, MIDI loops could be very convenient, but the way it is right now, uh, not so much, and that's a shame because well. There are lots of those available, and it's very easy to oh yes, uh, it's very easy to to work with them, um, and it's a very uh, it's a very cool entry things that newbies can can use. Uh, and unfortunately, it's not, it's not very much available for us on Linux. Um, so uh, uh, from there. Yes, the next thing would be to try to use general MIDI. Um, wait, uh, yes, I want to close this. What did I do? Shit. Uh, crap. Anyway, okay, I think. <laughs> Just quit, please. Uh, all right. Okay. Uh, so the next best thing after DRMR is the general MIDI thing. But uh, yes, I will probably skip this part about general MIDI because, well, you could guess that general MIDI, uh, it's it's not so bad. It's usable. Um, it is what it is. Um, and basically, the the only advantages of general MIDI is that the mapping is very 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 standard. So that's a good thing. Um, so the next best thing after general MIDI would be uh, SFZ bank sound. Um, and about them, the problem is, um, I, yes, I will speed, speed up a little because um, I think it's, um, um, yes, this is growing long. But um, the, the the biggest problem we have with uh, SFZ Bank is that um, if you're like me, you discovered that you could use them. They have nice features. Shit. Ah, crap. They have nice features like um, multi-layer and round uh and just some of them sounds very good. Uh, and it's now easy to use thanks to Carla. Uh, used to be very difficult from my perspective. Um, but yes, anyway. Um, so if you go online and try to find some some LV2 uh, and you're eager to have the best sounding one, you will probably end up with something like this. And that's not very practical to use because if you have to try all of them and to see which ones are good at what, um, well, that takes some time. So it's not very it's not very uh, quick or easy entry, I would say. Um, but anyway, let's try something. Uh, I don't know. I really don't know. Maybe this one. Why not? Um, and so I've written a pattern here. Uh, let's see how it sounds. Oh, wait a minute. It won't sound like anything. Up. OK, well, apparently. It's not working. Oh, yes, it is. Sorry. So I just took the first one I could. Um, here I was lucky. The mapping was okay-ish, it seems. Let's see.
Okay, good. Now let's say that's not the sound I want. Let's try to break it. Uh, oh, well, that was quick. <laughs> hmm. Just so you know, this is an LTS release. <laughs> uh, all right. Okay, well. Um, so my intent was to try to load another another bank and just show you how easily you can have something go from cache to very bad because of the mapping. Um, also, because the layerings are done differently uh, bit from one bank to another, uh, depending on how you've uh, edited the velocity of the different parts of your drum, drum beat, um, it can sound very weird as well. Um, so anyway, um, the next best thing after that is actually still about SFZ. Um, but uh, this time it's different. Uh, it's about the AVL drum kits. Um, so the AVL drum kits, basically, they're um, samples that were created by Glenn McArthur and uh, Robin, uh, Robin Garius uh, created an LV2 out of them. Um, and basically, they're just LV2. Uh, sorry, they're just um, SFZs, but um, with uh, an added benefits, uh, which is they're very trusted by the community. Um, so there are tr uh, three kits, two two drum kits and one percussion kit. Um, pretty lightweight, um, thanks to the LV2 plugin, very easy to 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 fire up and start working with. And they can go from stereo out to multi out. Uh, so it can grow with the song. Uh, if you start to go deep into mixing, well, you can keep working on the same sound bank. Um, so it scales up pretty well. Um, and it sounds like this. So it's basically the same drum beat uh, that you just heard, but now with the AVL drum kits. Sorry for this very cheesy uh, drum roll, but I needed to display the tom. Um, so now with the multi out, uh, I won't show how it's done because I think I'm running short on time. But um, one of the benefits you have is that you can start to mix your, your kit. Um, and that's very important because this will allow you to shape the tone the way you want. Um, so for those that, that uh, knows about it um, or Yes, whatever. Um, there is this this uh, very cool plugin from uh, Harrison, uh, unfortunately proprietary, but uh, it allows you to shape the attack and uh, the attack and the tail of each uh, kit pieces. So, if you want to start to use this type of things, uh, it's important to have this multi out. Um, shit. Uh, so this is without the tone shaping stuff and with. I don't know if you can tell the difference. Yes, oh yes, much better. Well, anything related to mixing is about subtle stuff, right? Um, yeah, that's what she says. Um, so the next best thing after this is, of course, uh, Drum Gizmo. Um, drum Gizmo basically, um, oh yes, sorry about cons, well only three kits, uh, that's not much. Uh, fixed velocity layers and fixed MIDI mapping. Um, I think, I'd, my guess is it probably would not work for a drum centric piece. Uh, if you had a huge drum solo inside of your song, maybe a VL drum kit would short a little fall. Uh, well, 
well, you got me, <laughs> whatever. Um, Dram Gizmo. Um, so if you ask around, uh, you will probably be told that it's the best option you have. Um, it is kind of versatile. There are several kits. Um, it sounds extremely good. Those are well sampled, um, well recorded. It's good gear that have been recorded. Um, it has a lot of cool stuff like uh, the shuffling samples uh, that replace Ron Robin that we were discussing with the uh, developer earlier. Um, a cool humanizer function and yes, also the cool drum gizmo sticks. Um, so it sounds like this, still, still the same thing, the same um, beat. Oh yeah, midi panic stuff. Shit. Yes. Yeah, that works as well. So I think it's out of all the options we have, it's the one that sounds the best. Um, uh, I like it very much, but uh, still there are some problems, I think. Yes. Um, only five kits that uh, are available, and um, th the kits are not very easily editable. Uh, apparently they are uh, editable, but um, not in a way I, I think most users, uh, like the mythical user we were talking about, the not tech savvy one, would feel comfortable editing. Um, the MIDI mapping is also editable, but again, you, you would have to go edit XML files and stuff, and most people, they don't even know that text files exist. So um, it's multi-out only, which means that you cannot just fire the, the plugin and start working right away. It needs, it needs works to sound good. Um, so this, it has lots of uh, potential, but you need to, to, to make something out of it. Um, so in a way, it, it can work for projects that are already advanced, but uh, it doesn't really scale down. Um, and also, um, well, when you fire it, the, the plugin, um, actually, it doesn't really remember the path where you, your kit are stored, or I think it doesn't. Uh, which is a problem for me because um, well that, that might be specific to me. Um, but uh, my kids, they're not uh, in my home folders uh, folder. So basically I have to I have to go back to the root and then only you know start uh, going deep into my f f um, uh, folder tree. So yes, that's not very convenient. Oh. Good, good here. So it's on the roadmap, apparently. <laughs> um, so well, the the effect of that is that it's just not very quick when you're when you're starting working on your song. Like I said, you want to stay focused on the artistic side, and this is not helping. Um, so I guess where we are right now with drums and stuff that relates to drums is um, it's it's pretty good. I mean, we can we can. We can work with what we have, um, though there are stuff that the community could help with, uh, since this is uh, this is about musician and the developer this conference. Uh, I guess uh, we could try to to start curating the different SFZ and the sources where we get them. Try to advertise the ones that are very good. Um, um, that would makes it easier to to well come across them because for now it's really. Um, for a person, well, oh, um, sorry, uh, it's very hard to speak. I don't know why. Um, so you have to spend a lot of time curating your own library. Um, and yes, wh whatever. Uh, create and share presets, I guess, tone shaping capabilities. Um, well, we could use uh, any EQ really, but we would have to come with something that people can really easily share. Um, so decide on one uh, and just start sharing stuff. Um, also create more kits, probably. Um, 
share methods about how to make them sound good, which is hopefully the talk, well, the subject of the next talk. And um, there are stuff, I guess, that we could develop to, or not me, because I'm not a developer, um, but if somebody felt enticed to do so, well, uh, I guess the MIDI mapping problem uh, could be maybe tackled probably with a MIDI ding script. Um, but that would be hard coded. Like you would have to, you need to have one MIDI ding script per uh, per conversion, like from general MIDI to drum gizmo, for instance. Um, also, I don't know, maybe some sort of uh, some sort of multi input mixers that one could could fire easily, uh, and that would have presets that that probably could solve uh, at least some of the some of the sound issues. Um, because for now, I guess the, the best option would be for one to create presets in Carla, but then it's not very shareable. So yes, hope, yes. I hope you learned stuff. Uh, um, I intended this to be much shorter, but um, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, I, so hopefully we would have had a discussion, but I think we're done with the time. Yes. <laughs> um, yep, so that was it. Um, hope you learned stuff and maybe this could start a discussion in the community. That would be interesting. Thank you. Um, I think we have time for one or two questions. Oh, okay. Yeah. If there are any, I don't know. Thanks for your talk. Um, so you didn't really get down into your workflow or what would be the best for you. Uh, what I got is Right now, having the existing plugins, you would like to start uh, your starting project with AVL Drum Kit, and then later on replace the plugin with Drum Gizmo, and uh, yeah, hopefully the map MIDI mapping is the same, or is there's a magic tool doing the mapping for you? That would be like a workflow for you that could work. Yes. So right now, um, the way I work, uh, but yes. So. For references, I'm, I'm mostly songwriting and writing arrangements for people, but mostly acoustic type music, pop music, whatever. Um, and yes, that's exactly what I do. I start with AVL drum kit, and then once I switch to drum gizmo, I just remap everything. Uh, but yes, that's that's a that's a working workflow at least for me. It's pretty easy to start. Uh, to start with AVL drum kit, it sounds pretty good out of the box, and you could ha just have like uh, one or two presets for EQ and compression to to use it on the stereo tracks. Um, so that would be very easy to start with, I guess. Thanks for the talk. <laughs> I like um, I could relate to many things that you you were talking about like the problems i like i used to write rock songs with hydrogen mm -hmm. where i made well brave the whole uh, drum arrangement in hydrogen sequencer and i Oof. synced that with ardor where i recorded guitars and vocals so uh, it worked for me but it's it's hard and not super flexible so i well that's so if you go onto forums and stuff that's probably what you'd be uh what you'd be advised to recommend it Yes, but uh, to me, it, it really doesn't fit, um, like I said, a modern day workflow where people want to be able to change stuff later on uh, to, to work on, uh, you know, on loops and stuff. Um, because, well, I, I guess maybe back, back in the 90s or early, early 2000s, people were still using a lot of hardware and it was a, a mindset that people still had. But nowadays, everything just happened in DAW. Yeah, um, and and yeah, people just expect things to work, to work like that. So if if you know what you want your drummer to play, you could just write it very easily in hydrogen, and it's very good at that. Um, but 
if you don't, if you if if you need more of a function functional approach where you basically have a song in your head, but you need you still need to find out what the drum could sound like. Uh, I think hydrogen in that in that sense is a bit limiting. So um, yeah. All right, maybe let's cut it. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. That wasn't the question, though. Yeah. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Uh, in terms of, I was just curious about if you have any advice on um, how you create the best sounding room sound for your kit, because a lot of this, supposing you pick samples from a lot of different places and they don't sound as if they're in the same room, how could you fool people into thinking that they actually are in the same room? Well, I tried some reverbs and stuff. Yes, but do reverb, you have reverb on Linux. The, the, some of them are pretty good. The, the most of the ones I use are uh, IR based, uh, so convolution stuff. Um, but uh, I guess again, you, that's something we're discussing with Unfa. The, the fact that we have some great tools in the Linux Audio community, but we really need, for now, it takes a lot of work to have them sound good. Um, and sharing methods and, and stuff like that is very important. For instance, um, I've once spent a whole afternoon just working on my reverb because I wanted to, I wanted to nail the pre-delay. So I had uh, one bus for my pre-delay and one bus for the reverb tail. Um, so there are stuff available and you can really, you can really um, have a very granular approach and and go into detail, but it's it takes a lot of time. So my advice is just, it, it well I, I don't really have one. It would depend on how much time you have to spend on your on your project. If you want it to sound the best, well it would take a, a lot a lot of time. If you want something very quick, uh, I guess uh, well the room microphones for drum gizmo that are included in drum gizmo kits, uh, it's already pretty convenient. Uh, sometimes I would just basically use mostly dem and the overhead and a little bit of kick and snare, and that sounds already pretty good. Um, but uh, yes, rooms, reverb, anything reverb is it's very complicated. And also, I guess the aesthetic about reverb changed a lot. Like we didn't use reverb five years ago, like we're using it today, and probably very different from what we were doing in the 80s. So uh, apply carefully. Right. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, thank you uh, for the talk again. Thanks. <laughs>